my purpose is centered and sits inside of who Christ has made me to be. It's this idea that what you do at work, who you are to your kids, who you are to your husband, who you are to strangers should not be different. The idea is that you're the same person in all these roles and all these hats that you wear. And what I realized was I was kind of different depending on who I was talking to because we're taught to code switch. We're taught to, you know, adjust to the room and, you know, make sure you act like you've been somewhere, some, you know, when you go somewhere and act like da, 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 da. And it's like, well, what if we did not act? Instead, we focused our pursuits on being. If you focus on being, then you have the space to be aware of what needs healing, what needs to be changed, what needs growth, and what is ready to be poured out into other people. But if you don't have that awareness of who you are and you're only focused on, well, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a corporate America queen, that's who I am, that's not who you are. These worldly positions are not who we are. And that separation and that mindset shift has been huge for me in every position that I operate in, including being a wife. Welcome to the Godbolt Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Godbolt, with my beautiful wife, Jade Godbolt. We believe that marriage God's way is the most powerful catalyst towards healing and holiness for you and everybody after you. We back. We are back. Okay. Well, so we're going to talk about you. Um, We're going to talk about wives. So how would you describe Wiffery? (laughs) Is that what it is? I don't even know. Wiffery? I don't even know. How would you describe um, being a wife, being a rib, being the feelings of my heart made flesh? I would describe my experience being a wife in this season as a season of learning how to submit and learning how to be more intentional about when, how, why I say certain things to you or how I bring things up to your knowledge or how I assess a situation. And it's been a lot of removing myself from being the decision maker and automatically taking the wheel and learning how to take a step back from that. And that started with me being obedient to the father and learning what it meant to be a daughter. So in your episode, you said something to the tune of you're learning how to be a son. And much like in that episode, you were expressing different seasons and the different lessons God was teaching you in those seasons. And I expressed how while you're walking through those seasons, it's also helping me grow in the same areas, watching you, witnessing you, and then being the first line of experimentation slash use what you've learned. I'm the first line that receives whatever you've gotten from God and receives whatever lessons you're learning. So even in this, it's been learning how to be a daughter as well and unlearning this sense of independence that I've built up for so long and finding peace, knowing that I don't have to have all the answers. And yet, When I do have a lot of answers, when I do know what's right or what's wrong in a situation, it doesn't mean I should always voice that. I should only be doing the will of my father, regardless of what's right or wrong, quote unquote, in a situation, because it's always so subjective. And even in times when I'm doing something right or wrong. You don't always respond to me with this authoritative, that's right or that's wrong. 
because that's not how the father treats you and that's not how the father treats me. And so inevitably you don't treat me that way. So I have had to do the reconciliation within myself to not treat myself like that. I used to be very critical and very, it's either this or that, and very hard on myself about being able to be what I'm supposed to be in a moment, checking off all the boxes, crossing every T and dotting every I with whatever it is, because I have such a high expectation of myself in all things that I think I'm coming out of a season where I felt deeply that I was doing everything wrong and that I wasn't a good wife because partly I wasn't a good wife, but it was also this inner communication that I had that told me that I wasn't a good wife and I would never grow to be better. So it was like always hindering me of being open to this idea of change and change being this scary thing for me for a long time to now being something that I have to manually embrace, knowing that that's the good thing. Life breeds change. So if I'm living life, if I'm going towards light, going towards life, then change is going to occur. And as a person, as a woman, and also as a wife and a mom too, but we're talking about wifehood in this moment. So when you was talking, something that came up for me, my mind going going to a football analogy of how I played wide receiver. And that's offense. The person that is playing cornerback is on defense. And they don't know the play. Like they may have an idea because they watch film and maybe it's like, well, normally that person does this when they do this, but they they still don't know. Mm -hmm. So your job is to, if you're playing man coverage, I got that man, you have to mirror or to the best of your ability, mirror what that person is doing, making it harder to play than the offensive guy that you're mirroring wide receiver. So I said that to say, like, as a wife who is submitted to a husband who is also submitted to the father, there may be something going on that your husband got from the father that you don't have all the information for because men establish, women expand. So you don't have all the information, but you know that this is the way that we're supposed to go. So you oftentimes are following my lead. And as you know, sometimes it's even crazy for me because I don't fully understand it. But then you get to that next layer of like, okay, this don't go with what I think we're supposed to do, but it also don't go with what he thinks that he should normally do, but this came from the father. So how is it following the lead of someone who's following the lead? Because mm -hmm. that's also very different than I'm sure like what you're used to, especially with your past being most of the time top of command. The only one, the main one, like how is it? And then it's also in your DNA because Mama Rita the same way um, and her twin is the same way. So it's like you've gotten it honest, like how getting to the place of following a follower, mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's crazy following a follower. Like that's what being a wife is in most respects. How is that? How do you deal with that? Give us some examples of how you've dealt with that. I'm not really remembering like specific examples. I think more I can speak to the feelings that I get and how I process the feelings now versus before. I have always felt empowered when I'm in a position to take control or to make decisions. I like feeling empowered. I like feeling like I can affect change in a situation. And what being a wife, a lot of it has been for me not getting my empowerment from that place. That's hard. It's hard to not 
desire to feel like you are the change agent in the way that you were before marriage and in the way that you see other people being able to be change agents elsewhere. So it's like being very aware of what I'm watching or what I'm comparing myself to in this season. I was even having inner dialogue earlier. I was scrolling on Instagram and seeing people that do what I do on social media being in a place that years ago I wanted to be in. And sometimes to this day, I still want to be in. I say this all the time, like if it was me, just me, I'd just be a beauty creator and I'd come out with my own product and I'd run that race. That's the race I would choose for myself. I would not have chosen this race for myself. So transitioning from just doing what I want to do because I feel good there, my flesh feels good there, to understanding that my role is part of a bigger plan of team. There's other players at hand and not being the one that makes all the the plays. In my world before I made, I was the quarterback. I was a star player. And as long as everybody followed me, we won the game. And the way my life was set up, being an influencer, really being able to be on my own terms for the last, what, since 2016, not having a boss, not like, you know, doing whatever I wanted to do. I got very comfortable there. And it's harder for me to submit to what you want to do or what you say is the better option in a scenario when I think I know that it ain't. And even sometimes feeling like you have a different viewpoint that I still think is wrong, simply submitting to you and and making that manual decision like, yeah, I wouldn't choose this and I still don't think this is right, but God calls me to submit to him and to follow him. So even if I'm looking around and I see a different outcome than what you're pointing us towards, I have to believe that the act of following you is more important than me being right in a situation. And when I spent so long finding safety and being right, sometimes it feels unsafe to not be right or to decide that I don't care whether I'm right or wrong, but the focus is following you. The focus is obedience to the Father because I'm more aware now than I was before that I think I know what the variables are of the situation, but I really don't. And the more that I've broken that down in me, the pride, the self-glory, the independence I have learned that it's not hard to submit when you know that the person you're following is submitted to Christ, submitted to God, and also that everything I knew before is literally opposite in the kingdom. So if I think I'm going to still be able to be that girl that I was before in our marriage is wrong. It's funny you go there because I was actually thinking about that too. As you were talking earlier, oftentimes where we're at to make the decisions that we're making, we didn't get there because God put us there or by following what he said to do. We got there by doing us, doing what the world told us to do to get said results. So then we come into an understanding of his truth. And really the only way to even get there is for us to unlearn what we thought we knew which also comes with a level of necessary humility because it takes, I was just talking to a friend earlier today about how like it's truly tough when you can tell that the only thing standing between the life that people really desire to have and where they are is the humility to repent for thinking that they knew better. Um, That's even one of the things that I've noticed in you, because early on, 
I mean, not even that early on, but even like maybe maybe even like a year ago or less, I could see the transition from when you were going from like realizing that I got to submit, but still feeling like, but I know better. So like, I'm going to submit, but I'm like checking you to make sure that either you know I'm submitting or that you are dotting all your I's and doing those things, which was you transitioning into like unlearning because that's where you came from. Like you are one of the reasons why you could be the, 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 I don't want to say girl boss because it's such a, (laughs) (laughs) but one of the reasons why you could be a girl boss is because you were very strong in those qualities, but that came from both trusting yourself, but also not trusting others. So like now you are put in a position as a wife that you have to not trust in yourself so that you can trust in his spirit and then also trust your husband, which is, which was a very new space. And I think that you're like starting to get a hang of it per se to where even if you don't, you're, you can admit that and you can come back and say like, yeah, like I had a moment. I don't know if you made this announcement yet that you're going hair back out, but like all of these things like are stemming from what you're learning in terms of being a wife. Like what else are you learning that you can apply like real stuff to of like, I'm a wife now, like, and not just that I'm a wife now, but I'm actually like putting that first in the way that I move. Like to me, even spiritually, like you've grown so much, you, you're, you're doing things behind the scenes that I don't think people see because you are still sharing content, but you're also doing things behind the scene scenes that help even the content that you're making. And there's a different spirit behind everything that you're doing. I think it's been a lot of choosing to speak less, choosing to discern more and not chasing the excitement and the passion the way that I used to because there's a difference between like Holy Spirit fire in your belly and you know you got to go do something or you feel him in you. I've felt that before. So when I was feeling roused up by competition or influenced by a feeling of, I know I can do better than what she just did. Mm. When I stopped chasing that feeling, because I was so used to chasing that, I got, I used to get a lot of satisfaction from knowing that I was the best and believing that and shaping my contributions to everything that I did based off of no one is going to do better than me. You're not going to outwork me. You're not going to be able to tell me that what I produced is not valuable. You're not going to be able to do anything that tells me that what I've done and what I'm capable of is not exceptional. That's all pride. It's all pride. And no one ever described pride to me in those terms before. So I would have never saw myself as being prideful. Was I confident? Yes. Leaning cocky? Yes. And I would admit that before too. I had my moments where I was humble and I was grateful and kind and softened. But I think the way that the enemy has been able to get to me has been in the enticing of you're better than her. So go harder. He's always enticed me with that. And this idea that if I can one up not even other people because it eventually never it, it started to become this imaginary person that I always felt like was doing better than me so I was always striving harder and harder and harder trying to be more creative trying to get better at this or that in order to beat this imaginary competition who was somehow always one step ahead of me And social media, especially doing what I do, you have lots of examples of people that seemingly are doing so much better than you. And I had to let go of my 
agreement with those things and ways of being. So when I feel that coming up in my flesh now, sometimes I catch it before it comes out, especially the habit of it. And sometimes I don't. Like that whole post that I did the other day. Some people saw, some people didn't. But long story short, I made this post about my past and the things I had done in the past. And I had this moment where I was just like reminiscing about who I was in a season where I was saved and I was very successful and people were very supportive of me. And a lot of had a lot of opportunities, all that stuff. But it was all in my own vein. It was all in my own power. And the gifts were obviously from God, but I was using them to push my agenda forward, not God's will for me. I couldn't even hear God if he was trying to talk to me at that time because everything else was so much louder around me. And God whispers. His voice is very gentle and very soft. So He's not going to scream at you unless you, you know, really about to do something. He ain't going to scream at you, period, because that would be manipulation. Or what feels like a scream. Not, not, that's not what I mean. It's more like, for me, it's like, don't go there. That sort of yeah, Holy Spirit that word tone. is yeah. that don't go over there. You about to walk that way. Don't go that way. Turn back. Double check that you locked your door. Things like that, that feel like a, oh, let me make sure I listen to this. I could still hear that at that time. But those are just, those, those, that's not the way God desires to talk to us all the time. He doesn't want to have to cut through all this other stuff just to get to you. He wants to be able to be in an intimate relationship where I'm always available I'm always ready to listen, and I wasn't that back then. So I put up this post, and people were, you know, putting nice comments underneath it and all this kind of stuff, and I started feeling this sense of, like, being back there. Well, and let me say this. I, I felt I didn't say anything. Like, I'm not on social media as much anymore, but when I go on, the first thing that I see is whatever the most recent um, thing that you posted. And I remember, like, seeing it. I liked it because, I, you know, I like everything, thing, everything that you share. But there was something off about it. But I wasn't led to say anything, so I just was like, you know, okay, and kept it moving. I don't, I didn't comment, nothing. I just, I just liked it and kept it moving. <laughs> Which is also normally a sign for me because I try to engage with everything that you share. But if I don't understand it, because again, like you have choice. Mm -hmm. So like you can share what you want to share. It's mm -hmm. not up to me. So like, yes, you still, you are still a person to where you have to make decisions for yourself. So I don't, you know, I, I, I don't monitor what you do. I may, if I'm let well, to say something, I'll say something. And but, here's the thing. It wasn't wrong for the post to go up it wasn't wrong for the people who commented under it none of that was wrong my conviction is my conviction so i know how me and the father operate in our personal relationship outside of you outside of anybody else and what i was doing was opening up a door that the enemy has been waiting for me to open back up just for all the reasons why I just said that I used to be the girl that fed off of knowing I could do better than somebody else. I would never admit that to anybody in past seasons, but nothing motivated me more than that. Some things would motivate me, but that Feeling like what I had to bring was better than what somebody else had to bring to the table, that would push me a little bit farther 
to get something done or to pursue something. That's no longer the place I pull from. It hasn't been the place that I've pulled from for a while. But when I made that post, God convicted me because the enemy is waiting for me to go back to a place where he can have access to me and not just ask access to me, but access to what and who I'm connected to. So he wants control of my platform. He wants control of this family, our marriage, our children. He doesn't want us to continue on this path towards righteousness where there is no room for competition because I'm not competing with anyone. Well, like, I think, you know, bringing that up, right? Because this is what comes to my mind. As it comes, as it pertains to marriage and the way that we come to understand marriage, the world's way. And I say the world's way because we believe, or I believe, we believe that God created marriage. So marriage is what he says. However, there are people who operate marriage the way that they think or the way that they grew up seeing or what have you. And there's this, um, either you have, uh, husband and wife operating separately or you have a husband and wife who um they there's the struggle of like well I'm the head and you and you should listen to me but then I'm not submitted so it's just like off kilter and it's so important for us to understand that like there is no competition even in marriage like best case scenario we're working together like you have things and God has given you a space of dominion that he hasn't given me. Mm -hmm. Go back to the beginning, man and woman were given dominion. So Adam is naming and Eve is joining. And that's very important to note here because oftentimes, especially when, when we're talking about like you were, you know, president of your sorority and, and, and doing all these things and all these followers and, all of this, and then you had me doing my Nike stuff, and you had, you know, seemingly two alphas coming together. And even at first, I know for me, it was like, okay, well, I'm supposed to lead. And then when you, even when you accepted that, it was like, yeah, you're supposed to lead, so lead. And both of those are the wrong way to approach it versus submitting all of it. And realizing that, yes, there's a lead, but your position don't compete with leadership. It actually adds to it so that we can both grow into where each God ha what God has for each one of us and for what he has for us together. And there's a humbling that comes with that because sure. I think that I've been having to humble myself and it's been very uncomfortable. I don't like it. I really, in my flesh, do not want to do it, but I have this sense of belief, faith, and commitment that I've always had in me. So anytime I say yes to something and I believe in it, you can't rip me from it. I'm there. And the enemy has used different things throughout my life to try to keep me from getting to this place where I take that same gift or giftings and put it towards God. So yes, I was always like a natural leader in everything I've done since I was a kid. I have always had this like spirit of influence, whether I liked it or not, I could not get it off of me. When I was 14 years old being catfished on the internet, I hated it. I hated that for some reason I would attract people. And because I didn't have spiritual language to understand some of these things that were happening with me, with people around me, what these things were, I just tried to make up explanations in my own head based off of what I'd have been exposed to in the world 
as to why things were the way that they were. And it's not until more recently where I'm starting to understand that you cannot change God's plan for you. He created you with very specific assignments throughout your life. And if you're someone who's searching for their purpose, go to the creator because your purpose is not going to be a specific occupation. Yeah, Jesus was uh, well, a carpenter or his father was a carpenter and he was supposed to be in today's world. Somebody would think that my purpose is to be in this occupation is to be a carpenter. But that's not your purpose. Your purpose has nothing to do with a title you hold, an occupation you carry, because those things change throughout your life. It's what's been built into you. What's your what's your inkling in every space you go to? Do you always lean into just helping and serving others? Do you always lean into somehow being the leader in every group that you enter in, whether people like it or not? And it's not the whole like you like to be the center of attention, so like you want to be the leader every time. No, it's the when things are falling apart, somehow, some way, people always come to you for advice. People always say, well, why don't we just, Jade, can you just like put it together for us and like get it? Like people are always going to know in their inner being, like what are those things that you have the tendency of just doing well? That's where your purpose is centered around, not these jobs, occupations, roles we play, even being a wife. Being a wife is not my purpose. I operate in my purpose in my position as a wife. My purpose is centered and sits inside of who Christ has made me to be. It's this idea that what you do at work, who you are to your kids, who you are to your husband, who you are to strangers should not be different. The idea is that you're the same person in all these roles and all these hats that you wear. And what I realized was I was kind of different depending on who I was talking to because we're taught to code switch. We're taught to, you know, adjust to the room and, you know, make sure you act like you've been somewhere, some, you know, when you go somewhere and act like da, 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 da. And it's like, well, what if we did not act? Instead, we focused our pursuits on being. If you focus on being, then you have the space to be aware of what needs healing, what needs to be changed, what needs growth, and what is ready to be poured out into other people. But if you don't have that awareness of who you are and you're only focused on, well, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a corporate America queen, that's who I am, that's not who you are. These worldly positions are not who we are. And that separation and that mindset shift has been huge for me in every position that I operate in, including being a wife. It sounds like you are discovering what it means for a woman to be present, which is part of your dominion. Because without you being able to be present, you can't tell what is needed so that you could be used for that, which is what your purpose is. Your purpose, to your point, is not in what your title is, what your manner is. So who are you? Not who are you here or there. Who are you? And that person being the same person, no matter, like you, you become more usable that way. Where it's like wherever this person goes, God is like, I can send my loving kindness with her. No matter what room she's in, no matter what the situation is, I can send her places because I know that I'm going into that place thanks to that vessel. So in you being able to understand that, 
Then it's like, okay, cool. How do I stay in that place? Well, that means I got to be present. I can't be out there. I can't be worried about what someone else is doing or not doing. I have to be able to be present. So whether or not they're doing what they're supposed to be doing or not, i.e., my my husband is having an off day. So instead of me being the one that's, you know, demoralizing him for having an off day, I'm present enough to sense that something is off so I can deal with the, hey, what's wrong with you? What's on your mind? Those types of questions you ask me that literally cut to the core. I mean, I'm even thinking about this conversation and <laughs> I believe that um, mine went, mine was very different when you were interviewing me than now, because you are better at those questions at like getting right to the core. Like I really do believe that women, that's part of their dominion, the oneness in all things. So if something is off, it's like, Oh, I know what that something is. I'm going right to that source. Hey, something wrong. What's up? Let's get this squared away because I can see that it's changing everything. And the humility that that takes to take, to take their, I worked at McDonald's from the time I was like 16 to or 15 to like 19, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, on and off. And there was this woman that worked there. She had a mental illness, but she would work there. And it was like like her happy place. Her family would say that this is where Michelle feels like her best. And she was on fries. And there would be times that like she would be asked to get off of fries and go maybe write some tables or what have you, or go carry out a drive through order. And she was always so happy to do whatever her role was. And I knew people, including myself, that certain places like, I don't want to be. And you're going to be able to tell, I don't want to be here <laughs> based on where you put me versus, oh, when Mark is in that spot, he's great, blah, blah, blah. But Michelle was always like, wherever you put her, she was doing, she was just killing. And it's crazy to think about now, but like as a woman, that was so needed in this place where you had, you know, men in seemingly in charge and trying to do these things and going, going about it in their ways. When it's like, whenever you have a bunch of men in the space, that oneness lacks because we all have our own thing that we're trying to get to and all this. When like, when a woman enters the space and understands the dominion that God created her with, it joins Everything and the humility needed to do that is few and far, but far in between. So, thank you for that because it it helps us go, and it's just as important as anything that I could ever do. Like without that, we'd have more days than we have, and really, it's not even days at this point. It's like moments where, like, I'm off. And it's shaping the environment. And then you come and you say, because even <laughs> I remember in 2020, we just moved back to Dallas and I was having a situation with my family where I was just getting frustrated with them um, not understanding the direction that I was choosing to go as it pertained to my faith. And I didn't realize how my body language and how I operated affected the sum of the parts. And you not even being spiritually where you are now, but you had a moment where you were sharing with me how I did not understand my influence, but I needed to as it pertained to leadership because I was just acting like it's just me 
So like, I'm going to do what I want and how I feel and all those things, not realizing that like, yo, whether you want, whether you want to be or not, you're a leader. People see you as that. So you have to operate a certain way. So fast forward to now when things are off in our home, you feel it. Now you don't always <laughs> come at me. <laughs> In the most gentle ways, but your, your goal is always the same. It's like, Hey, head of our home, we need you to be on. And if you're not on, we can't be on. So instead of me trying to be you, Ooh, instead of me trying to be husband, let me get my husband into the husband position that he's supposed to be in. And, and I wish why, wives understood how powerful that truly is. And that's why I'm not gentle with you in those moments. That's why I don't coddle. That's why I don't sugarcoat. Because do you not understand how hard it is for me to take the passenger seat and to do that on a regular basis? And so when I see you not functioning in the position you are called to, I'm like, come on, you better come on, whatever needs to happen. And sometimes, most of the time, you just need a reminder. You don't need like a whole sit down, talk, da, 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 da. It don't even need to always be all of that. Sometimes I have to tell you, hey, your funk is encapsulating the whole room. Not physically, but that spirit of mood is off. And I see it affect, I, I feel it. It like, it. I'm so sensitive to it that I go to 10, not 10, but I pick up on it very quickly. And I'm like, oh, no, we, that's got to stop. That's got to stop right now. And I think that God has equipped us in our marriage in that way, this heightened sensitivity in me to feelings, especially with you, because we don't have room to not be on. You can't be who you're supposed to be if I'm not there supporting and watching out for you. That's not me doing stuff for you. That's not me sitting in your spot. That's me doing my role as your helper, picking up on things that you can't pick up on, observing, discerning, praying, making sure things are ready for you. And we're not even talking about in a traditional gender role perspective because you do the cooking, you do a lot of the house making, but it so much of, of us is like spiritual. But what's powerful about that, though, is this. I was listening to a Miles Monroe message, and it was talking about how he was referencing a Time Magazine article that was written in, like, 2000, I believe, or something like that, that was speaking to how, prior to World War I, child rearing and all of those pamphlets and stuff that were sent went to the father, went to the husband, went to the man. Because he was home and he was, you know, doing the homework and you're growing your food and you're out. So, but now, you know, fast forward because of, you know, wars and traditions and all these things, the gender role changes. So because the gender role can change at any notice. Based on necessity. Based on necessity, based on what's going on around you. There's something that has to be static. There's something that can't change. And that's the spiritual roles because- those don't change. It's just a matter of how you now navigate the new physical norm, but the spiritual side of things is still the same. And I think understanding that that in itself comes over time, because I think that we speak different languages. Well, it's a foundational thing. And, like and, That's why the foundation yeah. has to be the spiritual side. Like right. You, you said all the time, that everything surpasses, physical has a spiritual root, because yeah. then it don't matter. Yeah. What roots are roots. It don't matter what grows above it. 
it still needs needs a root. Yeah. As long as that foundation is a, yeah. is set, anything can happen in the world, and we're still good because yeah. our foundation is rock solid. And understanding that when our communication styles or viewpoints conflict, that there must be a misfire somewhere, especially spiritually. Because I remember conf- conflicts that we would have, arguments we would have, where I'd be sitting there and I felt like you were literally speaking a different language. It was like we were talking to each other, but I could not tell you what you were saying. I did not understand. You get so wrapped up in going back and forth that you don't even know why you what are we even fighting about at this point? There's so many things that are coming up that there's no clear, what is the point of this conversation? And a little bit of that was my, you know, quitting on you prematurely emotionally because I have a shorter emotional bandwidth, I think, than you have, which is also, I think, not... I mean, it it depends on the type of people, but a lot of people will assume, oh, women are super emotional and men are logistic, logistical and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I would argue that in our relationship, it's kind of flipped a little bit based on. I think, again, foundationally, like going back to the beginning. And that's one of the ways that I know that I've grown. And, you know, that's one of the ways that you can know that you've healed because. Men are not supposed to not be able to feel. Yeah. We are actually supposed to be able to feel. Yes. Our dominion comes in still being able to feel it, but keep going. Yeah. Whereas women can feel and stay. We help them by helping them to keep going. They help us to tap into our feelings. Yeah. So like the more I've healed, the more I've come to like be able to speak about my feelings and acknowledge my feelings in a way that probably being healed, I just I just couldn't. And feelings are spiritual. They're not God just, created them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're not just yeah. physical. You can be triggered emotionally yeah. by a physical thing, but if you're feeling an emotion like anger or frustration or sorrow or any happiness, all of these things There's a spirit behind it. And so when you don't pay attention to your feelings, which I was, I was the girl that was like, oh, I don't like it. I'm just going to put it in the back of my mind, not deal with it. I'm just going to keep carrying this baggage that I got. I've been carrying since I was five and da, 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 da. And I'm good unless you open up that bag and then you realize there's 10 more bags inside that bag. And it's just things keep coming out and you don't realize that like, hold on, wait a second. Why are so many things coming out of this one suitcase? Is because that's been my stash point. So I get it with this idea that like feelings and emotions are hard to work through and distinguish and separate out because it comes with the awareness that even the negative is real. I yeah. think part of us tries to make the negative fake or make the negative not real so that we can cope and we can move on from it. But making the negative feelings or emotions fake is to not approach them in reality. And if you're not approaching them in reality, then they sit there spiritually while physically you may just be going about your life doing oh, no. your thing. They still there on both sides. But but my point is <laughs> it's it's still there. Whether yeah. there's physical evidence t- in your opinion or not, yeah. they're still there. And so the hard part is when you do make the decision to say, Okay, I am gonna start like unpacking my things and it's painful. And I think we spent a good portion of our marriage up until this point, because we in what we're working our way towards year four. We spent the greater portion of our first three years of marriage unpacking all of the those bags and not understanding how really deep they went. And I think just in this season, we're finally coming to a place when we're realizing, okay, I think all the stuff is out. I think we're done unpacking. So if we're done unpacking, now we got to go help some other people unpack. Well, not not even 
that we have to go help some other people impact. When you hear about you know these athletes that go off and do these great things, whatever, you talk to their fathers. Their fathers will say, I knew when you were ready before you knew that you were ready. So it's a matter of not now that I've learned all these things, let me go and find who I'm going to fix. It's allowing it's, the father I'm to the father direct you. Where to now he's sending people around you. And this is kind of coming all the way back full circle, not for you to be somebody different, but for them to be able to see who you actually are. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where we are now of like, yeah, like now that's the power of testimony. That's the power of sharing. That's the power of, of being the same person, being, just being Jay Godbolt. Not being corporate Jay got both and family Jay got both and wife Jay got, but no, I'm being Jay got both. And within Jay got both, God has put the capacity to be whoever he needs her to be based on where he puts her. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing now. Well, as Jay got both would say, that sounds like a great stopping point, guys. Doesn't Why are you talking like that? Cause you get like very like soft when it's time to like close out. You're like, yeah, so that's a good stopping point. <laughs> um, wow. Do you want me to say, all right, y'all, bye, see you later? Like, I, that's not me. I'm just, I'm, I'm what showing you, you, you. <laughs> you. Okay, it's about you. No, because you, sometimes you are. it's fun to don't, be like you. Don't impersonate me. Go ahead and be you, Mark Gobble. You. Whoa. No, um, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Um, this was another banger. All about my baby. And about you, too. Somewhat, but focus on you. I, I, you said this brilliantly on Instagram a few, a few days ago. You said, when you see me, you see him. When you see him, you see me. <laughs> I was like, okay, then. Let him know. How marriage is supposed to go. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Double Life Podcast. Signing out. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Godbolt Life Podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us a DM or leave us a review wherever you're listening. We really appreciate having you with us on this journey.